Ferrari horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Ohio Silver, the Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Tonto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past and the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver... The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Hurry, big fellow. And Silver, away. False dawn was faintly lighting the broken hill country of Jackson County, Wyoming, one morning in 1873. Dimly, it outlined a huge black wave that was filtering rapidly from the valley into the entrance of Paint Rock Canyon. The wave was accompanied by an unmistakable sound, the rhythmic thunder of countless hoofbeats as hundreds of cattle surged forward in answer to the yells of mounted cowboys. Then, after it passed the canyon's mouth, where two horsemen watched silently, it faded away into the night. The eldest of the two men who had been watching the herd turned to his companion. Yeah, not a bad night's work, huh, kid? Yeah, all right so far. And this time we pushed enough of those critters through the gap to really make it worthwhile. Oh, I hope so. I need the money. Uh, you get your cut, all right. As long as you string along with me and the boys. Uh, when is the payoff? Tomorrow afternoon in Buffalo. Say, I uh, heard that old man of yours was coming back. Oh, no, I don't think so. He told me he might stay down in Denver for two or three months. Well, it'll be healthier for him if he does. The old coot's a little bit too nosy. We're having trouble enough keeping Sheriff Kenton out of the way. Hey, what do you mean? Ain't I all You're right? You're holding up your end so far. Let's keep it that way. Now listen, Rip, you got no right to Simmer talk. down, kid. I just want you to remember who's dealing in this game. Well, I'm heading for town. Boys will take care of the herd. Which way are you riding? Uh, north. North, huh? <laughs> Ain't by any chance stopping at the Circle Dot spread, are you? Maybe. <laughs> a little early in the morning, ain't it, to start courting the sheriff's daughter? That's my business. Oh, sure, sure it is. I don't care what you do. As long as you play your cards face up with me. Good night, Rip. I'll see you tomorrow. Get up there, boy. So long, kid. Get up, you critic. Oh, oh boy. Oh, steady there. Steady. Hi, Brad. 
kind of early to be making a call, but I was riding by this way, and I thought... I think it's wonderful. I'm just (laughs) fixing breakfast. Come on in. All right. Mmm. Boy, that coffee smells kind of good. I'll pour you a cup right away. (laughs) Thanks, Edie. Welcome. Mmm. Ah, boy, that really tastes good. I I was hoping Dad would be home in time for breakfast. You've both been working all night, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, I guess it'll be along pretty soon. Well, haven't you been together? No, no, I was down near Paint Rock Canyon. Your dad was covering the eastern end of the valley. Did you find any trace of the rustlers? Uh, didn't cut a single sign. Oh, that's terrible. I wish there was some way to stop it. Dad's so worried, and so am I. Well, shucks, Edith, there's no need for you to get worried. I, I've heard a lot of the talk that's going around, Brad. Do you know that some of the valley ranchers are even accusing Dad of being in on it? Oh, some of these blabbermouth cow men make me sick. But don't worry. Your pa and I'll get the rustling stopped. I hope so. Your father's lost quite a bit of his stock, too. Yeah. And being head of the Cattlemen's Association, he's just as worried as the rest of us. Yeah, but I think my dad realizes that the law's doing everything possible. Maybe his the... trip to Denver will work out, and then what we'll... What do you be... mean, work out? The special detective he's going to bring from the Pinkerton Agency in Denver. Didn't he tell... Pinkerton? Te- pa didn't say anything to me about it. I'm sure he intended to. Why, the two of them, Dad and your father, were discussing it right here in this room not over a week ago. What's the matter? Ain't your pa with me as as his deputy doing a good enough job? Of course you are. Well, it's mighty funny. When my own father and the man I work for are afraid to trust me. They trust you, Brad. It's just that... Brad. Yeah? You don't know anything about the rustling, do you? Edith, how can you say that? Your word is all I want. Just tell me. Oh, No, of course not. It was a silly question, but I'm glad you've told me. Now, you you must be starving. I'll have ham and eggs in the skillet before you know. Uh, No, no, Edie. uh, Don't fix anything for me. Why not? You know, you'd better get used to having breakfast with me, Mr. Loring, because... Well, I I, I just thought of something. I forgot to tell your pa. I'd better ride into town. He might stop at the office before he heads for home. Oh, it can't be that important. You can wait No, no, here. i, I got to see him right away. Uh, I'll see you later, Evie. Brad, wait. I want to... Meanwhile, behind the closed doors of the Pinkerton Agency in Denver, Colorado, a grizzled and white-haired old cattleman was answering some pointed questions. Frank Camden's a very capable sheriff, Mr. Loring. I'm surprised there's anything going on in Johnson County that he can't handle. Oh, Frank's doing a good job, no doubt of that. And I'm sure that he and my boy would run the rustlers down. Your if... boy? Brad, my son. He's Frank's deputy. Oh, I, I see. But every rancher in the valley, including me, is losing so much stock. I figured maybe I could hire one of your range detectives to come up there and mosey around kind of secret-like. Does uh, might... Canton want one of our men to help him? Well, uh, to tell you the truth, uh, Frank doesn't know it. Uh, well, definitely, I mean. We've talked it over, but he doesn't know I'm... Well, why not? Because some of the ranchers have got the idea that maybe Frank Canton knows more than he's saying. Hmm. Well, if that's the case, I'll be more surprised than anyone else. But now I can understand why you're worried. Well, how about send one of your men back to Wyoming with me? Very well. When do we leave? We... Well, this is a job I'll handle personally. Well, good. I'm sure glad to hear you say that. How long will it take us to get there? Well, with a couple of good saddle horses, you and me ought to hit the valley about uh, noontime, day after tomorrow. The bright Wyoming sun had almost reached its zenith two days later when the southern trail into Buffalo echoed with the hoofbeats of two horsemen. The gray stallion was ridden by a grizzled and white-haired old-timer who slouched in his saddle with the riding ease of a true westerner. His companion, astride a dappled pinto, was a younger man. The way his eyes swept the sage and grass-clad hills on either side of the trail, it was evident he was seeing them for the first time. Nice country around here, Mr. Loring. Yes, none better. Looks like good grazing land. Best in the world. 
There's over ten first-rate cattle ranches between here and Pink Rock Canyon. Well, which one is your place? It's the last one, just north of the canyon. Uh, seems to me the only way cattle could be moved out of this valley would be to... What the... Dry cultures! Over there in the brush! Whoa, whoa, whoa! whoa. whoa. It's a good thing we're packing guns. Whoa. Why the dirty, sneaking rascal? Oh! oh. It was less than 30 minutes later when the Lone Ranger and Tonto urged their horses along the trail that led to Buffalo, Wyoming. We'll stop in Buffalo, Tonto. You can pick up some supplies. Ah. Then we'll... Oh, ho, Silver. Oh, 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 oh. You must have it while you... Look, up ahead on the side of the trail, steady, Silver. Ah. Come on. These men have been shot, Tonto. Ah. Their horse grazed side the trail. This one is dead. Bullet through his temple. Man, he is still alive. Him breathe. Here's a badge inside the dead man's coat. Let's see. Pinkerton Detective Agency. He must have been on the way to what some... What do we do? Somebody come. It's a horse and wagon. Good. Never be able to move that wounded man any other way. Whoa! Whoa there! Whoa! Whoa! What in the world? Mask! And an Indian! Outlaw! Oh, you're mistaken, miss. We found these men lying here just a few minutes ago. One of them is seriously hurt. Oh, I and have... the other one is dead. The wounded man needs a doctor... Uh, we can move him in your wagon if you'll... Per- Wait, let me see. Why, it's... Oh. Do you know him? It's Mr. Loring. Matt Loring. And uh, the other man? I never saw him before. We can't leave them here on the trail. There must be a doctor in Buffalo. Tonto and I'll load them both into your wagon and... Yes, help- I'll... No. No, we can't take Mr. Loring into Buffalo. Why not? He's seriously You wouldn't wounded. understand. But after what happened night before last, the ranchers here in the valley... Oh, uh, what do you mean? Over 500 head of cattle were stolen. A rancher's searching party found the tracks going right across one end of Mr. Loring's ranch, and... I, I don't know why I'm telling you all this. Well, no matter I... what's happened, Mr. Loring needs a doctor now. Yes, I... Well, we might take him to my place and Good, then send... Uh, help me, Tonto. Uh-uh. Help me, help. Here. There's some straw on the wagon bed and a piece of canvas. Uh-huh. There. Now, the other man. Uh-huh. Let me bring him. Uh, now, this uh, one is beyond the help of any doctor, but we can't leave him here on the trail. I wonder There's could... a badge on his coat. Evidently, he's a man from the Pinkerton Detective Agency. The Pinkerton? Oh, Do you my know... father's the sheriff here in Johnson County. Then this is something he ought to know. You mean... Oh, wait. These men are coming, and there's no time to get away. Who are they? Do you know them? Rip Macy and a couple of his men. That always means trouble. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, boys, looks like we stumbled across a killing. And in broad daylight, too. Yeah, it sure it does, man. As long as the law ain't around. You with a mask, get your hands up. How did you know anyone had been shot out here? Maybe you didn't hear me, stranger. I said elevate your claws. Tonto, get Silver and Scout. Uh-huh. And you climb into the wagon and get ready to drive. I... All right. Anything's better than Rip Macy. I'll give you ten seconds to reach. Oh, I won't the... wait. <laughs> that scratch won't hurt. But don't try to pick up your gun. Blast him. What's the matter with you? Your men are smart. They'll keep their guns in leather. Otto, right ahead of the wagon. Uh-huh. We go now, miss. I... All right. Get up, boy. Get him up, scout. Eddie Silver. Easy, big one. If you're wise, you'll turn around and ride the other way. You follow me, you take the consequences. Oh, Come on, Silver. Last cowboy can bluff me. Hand me a gun. Come on, throw down on that critter. We'll trail him with lead. Get up there. Come curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. Knowing that at all costs he must protect the girl and the wounded man in her wagon, the Lone Ranger pulled Silver to a sudden halt. Ho, ho, Silver, ho, boy. Easy, ho. There he is, Rip. I warned you. Dirty old hoot can't... Uh, my gun. Slug hit my gun. That lesson doesn't make sense. Keep following me and you'll get some more of the same thing. Mon Silver. You are to sure a couple of first-rate gunslingers. Letting a cheap two-bit outlaw hey, bluff the other... He bluffed you too, Rip. Well, I... He got in a lucky shot. Knocked my gun down. Uh, what do we do now? Head back to town. Come on, get up there. Get up. Get up. A little better, I think. I dressed his wound, but he needs a doctor. Hunter and I'll ride to Buffalo and send one out here. The dead man, he's still in the wagon. You'd better leave him there for the time being. Your father, the sheriff, will know what to do. Dad's in town. At least I think he is. So many things have happened. Cattle stolen, all the ranchers accusing Dad of... Then Mr. Loring shot. Rip Macy, you, and... Oh, I don't know what to think. Maybe I can help if you'll tell me what it's all about. Why should I tell you? An outlaw who... Well, you... You can't make things any worse than they are now. I hope not. My name's Edith Canton, and and as I told you before, my father, Frank Canton, is the sheriff here in Johnson County. Then he must know Matt Loring, the wounded man. They've been friends for years. That was one of the reasons Mr. Loring and his son Brad settled here in the first place. Oh, uh, how old is Brad? About my age. You see, Dad and Mr. Loring, they always hoped that Brad and I would... I mean... I understand. About a year ago, my father gave Brad a job as his deputy. Everything was wonderful until... Until what? Brad started drinking and gambling with Rip Macy and his crowd. Both Dad and I tried to stop him, and I think he did stop for a long time. Then this cattle rustling... Has your father been able to get any track of them? No. But it's even worse than that. Ranchers here in the valley have found evidence that large herds have been moved across both the Loring Place and ours. And naturally, they're suspicious. Everyone mistrusts everyone else. Even Dad and Mr. Loring are suspicious of each other. And uh, what about Brad? He's been working with my father and riding with different searching parties. I don't let, think uh, I... Let me ask you something, Edith. Do you think Brad Loring is tied in in any way with the rustlers? No, I don't. Why? Several things you've told me point to him. I... Well, it just couldn't be Brad, that's all. I understand. Is your father in town now? I suppose so. He he left here early this morning. Good. Not and I'll send out a doctor for Mr. Loring. How can you, an outlaw... Adios. Otto. Uh. Ride into Buffalo, Tonto, and find a doctor and send him out here. Uh. Then stay in town and see what information you can pick up about Brad Loring. Uh Uh-uh. You stay here? No, I'll meet you at the edge of town about sundown. In the meantime, I'll scout the valley between here and Paint Rock, steady big fella. Uh Uh-uh. Oh, yes, so one more thing. Before you leave here, Tonto, go back into the barn. man who was killed is still in the wagon. Uh, Get that Pinkerton badge from the inside of his coat. We uh, may need it later. Uh Come on, Silver. What you doing in here, Redskin? We don't sell any liquor to Indians. Uh, me not want drink. Me want to see Brad Loring. Brad Loring? You mean the deputy sheriff? Uh. That's him playing cards over there in the corner. And if I was you, I wouldn't start any palaver with Brad right now. His luck ain't running so good. He might figure you for a jinx. Uh, me wait. Want to play any more, Brad? Sure I want to play. The luck can't run this way forever. Go on, deal the cards. How about you other gents? Yeah, not me. No, no, yeah, I no, guess no, it's no, just no. you and the deputy sheriff playing each other, Rip. Go on, deal. Now, wait a minute. Let's see how we stand first. I'm into you for 2000 am I right? Well, what difference does it make? You owe me more than that. Maybe. What do you mean? You haven't paid off my share in that job the other night. I know, but right now you owe me 600 more than you got coming. Well, give me a chance to get even. Yeah. 
Go on, deal the cards. Just as soon as we have a little understanding. About what? We're running some more beef tonight. Yeah? And naturally, you'll cut in for your share. It'll be the biggest herd we've ever moved. But I've been thinking we might as well make it a little bigger. How? Well, as long as we're running the critters across the top of your old man's spread, we might as well take a few of his steers with us. No, no. You know I'm not going to help rustle any beef from my own father's ranch. Suppose it was your stock, not his. No, no. When Dad comes back from Denver... Oh, wait a minute. Remember the tip you gave me about how your pa, being head of the Cattlemen's Association, might have gone to Denver to bring back a range detective? Well... I've been having a couple of the boys watch that south trail ever since then. You were right. He showed up. Today? Yeah, this morning. Of course, the boys had to salivate a critter like that. Oh, I don't care. Nothing to me. The only trouble was... Your old man was riding with him. Dad, you mean... More of an accident than anything else. I went out there personally as soon as I found out about it. You mean you're sneaking killers, dry goats, my dad? Why, you dirty... Oh, shut up. You won't do anything. Both of the boys have got you covered. Well, I... I'm going home. You're going to sit right here till we get ready to ride tonight. Understand? Now I'm ready to play poker. Here, cut the cards. Brad! Let's say, Brad. Oh, the deputy sheriff ain't feeling so good. What do you want? Uh, there's a redskin over by the bar who wants to speak. Hmm, that's funny. What? There was an engine walking around here just a minute ago. Said he wanted to see Brad. Now he's vamoosed. Well, it's just as well. The deputy sheriff ain't hankering to see anybody but me. Much later that night, when the lone ranger and Tonto brought their horses to a halt in the shadows behind the sheriff's office. Ho, 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 ho. What's that, Tonto? Most all ranchers and family hold meeting. Me think them plenty mad. A mob, and it's coming this way. You wait here, Tonto. I'm going into the sheriff's office tonight. Uh. I don't know how the rest of you feel, but I say... Let's make Frank Canton give us a showdown. He, he claims these rustlers are too smart to get caught. Sure they are. They're too smart to get caught by a sheriff whose eyes are blinded by gold pieces. All right, Canton. Come on out of that office. If you've got nerve enough to face us. You've got the lamp lit. So we know you're in there. Come on out. Maybe some lad will bring him out. Frank Canton, it's an owl who's wearing a mask. I'll throw it. Squeeze that. that trigger and it'll be the last lead you'll ever throw. Quiet, all of you. Who are you? My name wouldn't mean anything to you, but I've just discovered something all of you ought to know. Quiet. I've just found a note lying on the desk in Frank Canton's office. I'm going to read it, and all of you are going to listen. Either that or... All right, what is it? Listen, to whom it may concern... I have reason to believe that some of the ranchers here in Johnson County think I'm in cahoots with the rustling that's been going on. I'm not, but I'm not asking anyone to believe me until I prove I'm right. The payoff will be tonight. If I win, I'll have the crooks in jail. If I lose, it doesn't make any difference, because at least I will have done my duty. It's signed, Sheriff Frank Catton. There. That's the kind of a lawman you've got in Johnson County. Yeah? If Frank Canton's honest, why ain't he here now? Probably because he's out doing his job. This outlaw armory's just stolen. I'm going No, you're not. No! Come on, Toto. We can't form a posse any other way. We'll make them follow us. Look, he's lighted out. There's a red skin. Silly big fella. Use your gun, Toto, but shoot over their heads. Ah. Come on, Silver. Get him up, scout! Riding hard, the Lone Ranger and Tonto followed a dim trail that led from Buffalo to Paint Rock Canyon. Thick underbrush and trees cloaked the mountain flank as they lost the trail, regained it again, and thundered on through the night. Finally, they rode out onto a little promontory that overlooked the entrance to the canyon. They reined their horses to a sudden halt. Oh, Silver, hold on. Oh, 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 oh. Bright moonlight threw the valley below them into sharp relief. 
They saw a large herd of rapidly moving cattle with several mounted men shouting as they herded into the canyon. Suddenly, a rifle crack. And the next instant, pandemonium broke loose. Streaks of vicious orange flame came from the guns of the rustlers. While directly below them, they heard the answering fire of twin 45s. Come on, Toto. Frank Kent was trying to stand them off alone. Hailing their mounts, the Lone Ranger Toto plunged down the slope. There amidst crashing guns and falling cattle, they saw a figure suddenly detach itself from a group of rustlers. Raced toward the rock where Sheriff Kenton was sheltered. They saw the figure stumble and fall as he was caught in the withering crossfire. Then they heard the approach of the rancher's posse from Buffalo. They knew the battle was over. Oh, sir, oh, 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 oh. Toto, that boy lying out there dead is Brad Loring. Uh-huh. Before anyone else gets to him, take this badge, pin it on his shirt. Uh-huh. Me not savvy why you do this, Kino Savvy. Brad was killed because he made a mistake. I'm sure he tried to make up for it, but he was too late. A girl believed in him, and there's no reason why she shouldn't hold that belief forever. Go on, Tom. Uh-huh. Dad, oh, Dad, are you all right? Edith, what are you doing here? I had to come. I, I knew that you and Brad were... Brad's dead, Edith. He died trying to help me. Yes, I know. One of the ranchers told me Brad's lying over there. I I just saw him. Maybe you shouldn't have done that, Edith. Might have been better for you to remember Brad as he was. I'm glad I did because I found this badge pinned to his shirt. Badge? See, it it says Pinkerton Detective Agency. I was wrong, Dad, and so were you. Brad must have been running with Rip Macy's gang just to get information about them. He was really a longin' all the time. Mm. Yes, he does. I guess you're right. I, I'm so proud of Brad. What he did. So am I, Edith. I don't exactly understand it, but I'm proud and thankful it happened. Bill Silver! just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.